Hi guys, welcome back to Forgetful Scholar and this week we're going to talk about two books and I'm back. Yes, I am back and I have my voice back. Oof. That was a rough couple of weeks. I had bronchitis and laryngitis. So I couldn't really do a video when I can't talk. And <laughs> to be fair, when um, I was sick, I didn't read. <laughs> I, I just didn't feel like it. I was just like, my brain just couldn't handle it. So I ended up just watching, you know, binge watching TV. So guilty of that. So again, I couldn't have, um, you know, made a video if I didn't read any books. Sorry about that. And I'm trying a new um, lighting situation. Let me know what you guys think. Anyway, so this week is Lady R and the Pretty Woman Dress. So I was kind of, I felt like a bit of mystery week. Um, the first book is Romance Paranormal Mystery. Um, and the second book is Cozy Mystery. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the first book. And it is Ghosts in the Hall Beyond the Veil Book 1 by oh I forgot to write down who they're by oh no oops and my kindle's downstairs I'll put it right here right across my face and I'm so sorry I usually write this stuff down okay so it basically the main character is Edward um he goes by Ward um I really like the world it was a fascinating world It's in like reading it after the whole global horrible sickness thing. Um, some of the quotes hit a little close, and I'm not the only one that highlighted those. <laughs> some of those lines it was highlighted by a lot of people. Um, so and this was a long book. I think this was almost like 400, 300 pages for a romance novel. That's pretty long, right? So Ward, okay. So basically this is uh, an earth of reality that there was a global illness, <laughs> um, but it was magical. So as I understand it, how this world building works, that the magic is real, but the world at large didn't know about it, right? Um, and there are some real, real witches um, from like old magical bloodlines that exist, but they kind of were hidden. Um, and then there was a pandemonium, you know what I'm saying? I don't think I could, I don't think, um, YouTube lets me say the word still. So, um, and, but it was magical in nature. So if you got it, it either killed you, turns you into a, a noid, um, which is like a human that has power, magical powers. Or it turns you into, um, I forget what they called it, but like it turns you into a magical creature. So like say, um, just realized how crooked my eyebrows are. You know, let's not, let's, let's not, let's not focus on that. Yeah, let's, let's not. Okay. Um, talking to myself, let's not focus on that. So, um, like, um, say your ancestor had, uh, elf blood. So it would turn you into an elf or, and like, it seems like Lord of the Rings type elf. Okay. Um, say you had, uh, some people turned into vampires. Some people turned into ghouls. Um, apparently after the initial blood slash human flesh lust, they are able to, um, conform into society. Um, go back to society or you turned into an orc. You know, it kind of depended what was hidden in your DNA. Um, and there was, there's no cure, so people still have almost the same as, you know, the restrictions we had. So, you know, they have to wear masks in public, things like that, right? Now, Ward, his mother got it when he was six, six or seven, and she died. And his father drove Ward to his aunt's, and then his father killed himself. So it's sort of, that's the thing, like... People also died because of the illness, but not because they were sick, but because they couldn't handle it. You know what I mean? So Ward got sick when he got was older. So when he was an adult, he got sick with it, but he survived and he turned into a Noid, which is a human with the extra ability. And he can see the dead. So he's like a medium. Um, 
it's kind of fascinating. We're all in Ward's POV. I do like Ward's personality. Um, I do think there was a lot of... The pacing wasn't great. The pacing wasn't great. I will tell you what I loved about this book, um, but that was one of the things that I found kind of lacking. I think it could have done with another go through. I think you could have cut like 50 pages. Like the first time Ward is agonizing over his clothes. Cute. I get the sense of him. I understand him. Who hasn't done that, right? So like I get it. I do. And I felt like I feel like we got a huge sense of who Ward is just with that scene. But the problem was that scene repeated itself four times, I think. Like the first time was cute. Second time wasn't necessary. Third time was hell of annoying. You know, fourth time I just skimmed it till it was done. So like, that's what I'm saying. It just, there was a lot of stuff that wasn't necessary in it. Um, so the pace, so the pacing of it was kind of off. Um, and then, you know, I thought it was done. Oh, no, there's another chapter. Oh, I thought it was done. Oh, no, no, there's another chapter. And I was like, is it done now? Oh, no, no, it's epilogue. Okay. So, like, <laughs> the epilogue was cute. And it's what I think epilogue should be, like, sort of like a little extra bonus at the end of the book that if you don't read it, it doesn't change anything of the book itself. But if you do write, read it, like, you get a little treat. You know what I mean? Because um, I hate epilogues that are, like, essential to the plot. Then that's not an epilogue, honey. That That's part of the book. You know what I mean? So I did give this three stars just because the pacing was driving me a little nuts. Like, it was just driving me a little nuts. So Ward gets um, hired to do a seance to the super rich people in this super big mansion um, because they're dead father um they have to find his uh will right and ward goes in there and he's shocked because there's like so many ghosts like everyone was like packed full of ghosts so i think it was um in the 60 like 67 ghosts or something like that like crazy amount right and one of the ghosts is lady r lady uh rudolph um i forget the last name she kind of made me think, if you watch the American version of uh, show of Ghosts, the TV show, the robber baron's wife, I forget her name, but I love her. That's who I pictured as Lady R, right? And uh, Ward is uh, gay because this is an MM. Um, boy love, MM. Um, so, like, he's <laughs> he expects her to be, like, a bigoted bitch, right? Uh, Lady R is wonderful and I love her and she has so much personality like stronger the ghost is personality and life is the stronger the ghost is kind of thing right and she is just a boss bitch and I love her she's funny she um she really kind of makes a friendship with Ward um when Ward's like because like she called him Nancy not to like as a homophobic slur not like that because again she died like 1880s you know it's not a homophobic swir slur for her and he's like you can't say that now because it's mean and she's and she's like why and he's like oh because I'm gay and that's really messed up and she's like oh my favorite brother was gay you know like it was just a very kind of refreshing moment because I thought she was going to be a little because you never know you know especially with gals from the 1880s <laughs> so what am I talking about anyway um the descriptions of the ghost were like creepy and I loved it um because you guys know I'm a big big bitch when it comes to written horror right and the Halloween books didn't scare me at all which I was kind of disappointed about because I'm easy to scare when it comes to books but the descriptions of these ghosts I was like oh that's so creepy um so that was a lot of fun so he knows something's up because there's so many ghosts there right and Lady R can't tell him why she's stuck there but she wants his help to get out of there, you know? So he's like, and Ward is such a sweetheart. He does this. Well, yeah, he makes a living off of it, right? But he does it because he generally wants to help people. So when he's contacted for a job, he does do a little internet research to find out, like, what they can afford. So for the rich people, he charged a lot, right? But then later he helps a recently um, widowed mother of three 
that family cut her off because she married an Asian man. Bullshit. Um, he does it for free for her because, you know, she, he's just a sweetheart. You know what I mean? And he tries to help out as much as he can. And he works regularly with the police department and the detective who's an elf. Hilarious. Because, like, he's described so ethereal and, like, very Lord of the Rings elf, right? And the detective comes up and he has such a br abrasive personality and he cusses, like, every other word that I was just like, what? I really like this character. <laughs> I want more about this character. Does the elf detective get his own book? Because I would read the hell out of that elf detective. Hell yeah. So I was like, um... So he works regularly with the police department to help, you know, cold cases and things like that. Um, so he has a reputation. He's well known. And, he, and we're in his head. He's an insecure sweetheart who's had past relationships that really scarred him. And it's like, everybody, sweetheart, don't worry. You're not the only one, I promise. Um, and he comes across Mason. And um, Mason is a surprise to him at first because he's never met an orc. Um, and Mason apparently... Uh, Ward feels so foolish because Mason is like a famous um, professor in the occult, or at least he was, before he turned into an orc and then he was fired. Bullshit. Um, and he works uh, as the gardener in this big place because his dad is the butler. So there's a little internal stuff we get from Ward. We're like, oh, he's never met an orc. Oh, I hope he doesn't. He's like, I hope I'm not offensive. I don't want to be inoffensive. How come I don't have any orc friends? What the hell's wrong with me? Like all these things in his mind. And you're like, oh, baby, you have so much anxiety. Oh, okay. Um, and I do like that um, it's obvious Mason and Ward are kind of attracted to each other pretty quickly. But both of them are like, circling the wagons and not sure because they've both been really messed up from past relationships which you know is understandable so I liked it wasn't like immediate like oh birds are singing instant love no they're attracted but they're both like cautious you know especially since Ward has a lot of self-esteem issues right um because of the illness he also has a lot of dietary stuff he can't eat his body can't process um red meat anymore um, he can't eat artichokes. Like, he has to be really careful about his diet. And as someone who has food allergy, I, I get it. It sucks. Um, and plus, like, you know, he always has low blood pressure and low sugar because of the illness. So he kind of kind of eats granola all the time. Um, and he just feels like he's weak and no one likes him. He's a lot of self-esteem issues, right? And Mason doesn't think anybody would want to be with him because he's an orc and because humans be horrible. Um, orcs are treated like shit. Uh, like when the cops come uh, called on an old murder, uh, they arrest Mason. Like they, they're horrible to him. They police brutality, all of it. It's horrible. Um, until the elf, like, well, Ward starts yelling at them, you know, and they don't know how to, um, the cops don't know how to defend themselves against a human yelling at them for being um, speciesist or like, you know, it's a obviously analog for racism um, towards Mason. But Mason's like, oh, he's defending me. That's so cute. You know, and then the elf cop shows up and he just cusses, yells at them because he's a detective in their, you know, county police. So he just like tears them a new one apologizes to Mason. I was like, I want, oh, I want the Elf Cop book, you know? Um, so it's very sweet. So their romance is slow, but sweet. And I like that we, we go with them on like the awkward first dates. And then we go with them when Mason meets Ward's best friend, who is like a famous exorcist. There's still the mystery of what's keeping them in that house. And Mason is doing the research. So they're kind of working together, which is cute. Um, Mason also turned out to be from a long line of brujas, which is, um, Spanish for witches, um, before he was turned into an orc. So that's really kind of fascinating. Um, they found out the horrible history of, and this is, I think this is, uh, in Virginia. So slave plantation turned into a, a manor house, you know, um, and who they think is there. And it turns out that ghost is possessing people and continuing their horrible murder spree and there's a really creepy dream with a really creepy uh young boy spirit that I was like oh 
I did the oh face. Oh, it was creepy. I loved it. It was great. Okay. So I will say the romance was very sweet. Um, one part I just melted was uh, Mason um, carries granola bars with him just so if um, Ward looks like he's gonna pass or something he has granola bars with him. And I was like oh my gosh that is so cute. I love that. Um, we get to uh, uh, Ward meets the family which is really cute. Um, that was this cute epilogue like uh, Ward meeting the family um, which I really liked. Um, the, the huge showdown with the the evil. I wish it was a little longer. So that's why I'm saying pacing was off. Um, I wish we had less time him worrying about clothes and more time with the big boss battle because I like the confrontation with the ghost was maybe a page and I was like oh man like the the one-on-one -on -one between Ward and the evil ghost um was just like a page and I'm like damn it we had like 10 pages of wardrobe anxiety and we only have one page so that's the thing I I wish was a uh, switched you know um Ward ends up paralyzed and I did, and this is going to sound weird, but I did like that it wasn't insta-fixed. You know, he's in a wheelchair at the end of the book. He has to go to physical therapy. He might be able to walk in. He might not. But I like that it wasn't just magic fixed it. You know what I mean? I liked I liked that part. So I really liked it. And I'm going to continue the series. Um, sorry, this is the longest stretch of time I talked since I got my voice back. So you could hear I'm like a little, getting a little hoarse. But it's okay. And so that one I enjoyed. And I'm going to keep going with it. Um, now, the second book. The Mystery Murder, uh, an Epiphany Bloom Mystery Book 2 by Katie Gale. And we know Katie Gale is two writers. So this follows Pip or Epiphany. Um, this is two stars. And this is the Julia Roberts, the Pretty Woman Dress. Now, through the whole book, I had the Pretty Woman song stuck in my head. And this was two stars. This is the cozy mystery. I didn't particularly like this one. The first one I loved. It was like I was watching a BBC cozy mystery show, you know. This one I just couldn't fall into. This one I just, I, you know, it could have been the mystery. It could have been, um, I just wasn't, I'm a mood reader. So it could have been I just wasn't in the mood for this type of book. I just... I found it boring. I'm sorry, I found it boring. And some of the parts, I was still like, oh, I still thought them, some of it was funny. Like, Pip is still horny AF. Every time she sees an attractive guy, she's like, oh, his face, the cheekbones, the jawline, those biceps. And I'm like, Pip, <laughs> girl, you're still, you're still horny, okay, hilarious. There was a lot, the pacing was weird in this one. Because there was a lot of back and forth. And there was a lot of this weird sideline about llamas. Her mom's going to start a llama farm. But apparently she's just going to make Pip do it. And Pip's like, no, I don't want to. So we start off, Pip got fired from the private investigation firm. Which I was kind of disappointed on. I would have liked at least one book when she's working for the big firm. You know? We still get weird tidbits of her weird past that we don't know exactly what's going on. Um... Like, apparently, she, if only she went through a line with, with, uh, uh, one throwaway line is if, oh, if only she was able to complete the second section of the FBI training, she would be able to tell if this person was lying or not. I was like, fucking what? <laughs> Pip, what? Um, so she gets a job in this tiny little museum that um, has clothing, like clothing vintage museum, right? Hollywood costumes, things like that. Um, and one of, and the, she notices the dress that is up for the, the pretty woman red dress, you know, the one where she's the jewelry, the famous moment, right? Um, she realizes that's a fake because a pip is very observant, you know what I mean? So she realizes it's a fake, and then the curator breaks down, tells her the truth, and begs her to help her find the dress, um, because she found, you know, the, Famous actress's missing son. So she's got a bit of a rep now, right? Um, so Pip's like, sure, as long as I get to work here. And I guess for the next book, she's not working there any longer. Um, 
I get it. This is probably what this book series trope is going to be like, but I, I have a feeling that's going to get a little annoying as the book goes on. So we'll see. Um, Pip's not dating Tim. She's not dating Jimmy. The two, what, who will she pick from last time? Um, but she's sort of went on a friend date with Jimmy and then she gets axed, uh, axed. Oh, my jersey's coming in. She gets asked, um, to go to a friend's wedding with Tim as a friend. So on a friend date with Tim. So it's this, that bullshit continuing. You guys know how I feel about triangles. They're fucking bullshit or V's or whatever. Fucking bullshit. Anyway, um... So the whole time she has to find the pretty woman dress. And I'm just like in my head, the theme song to that movie kept playing. And I just wasn't interested. Um, now I completely believe um, fashion, especially like historical fashion, is an amazing view into the history of man and our cultures and is artwork that of themselves, you know? Um, so I was kind of surprised that I wasn't more interested in her finding the right dress. Um, but I just, and then there's a murder halfway through one of the black market, um, I'm just going to say like art fences because the dress is art, you know, um, they end up dead, you know what I mean? And it's just this like circular thing where Pip contacts one person, like a black market fence to find the dress and that person ends up killing these the other fence and then stealing the dress from who originally stole it to sell it to Pip. Like, it was a really weird thing. And I'm like, oh, so if Pip didn't do A, then the guy wouldn't have gone to B and killed that person. Like, it was really weird. Really circular, you make your own problems sometimes kind of moment. Um, So that was strange. Um... The conclusion, yeah, she finds the dress. She finds the murderer. Um, it was just... I'm sorry. It was boring. I mean, I don't know. I still found Pip funny. Um, but the whole mystery... You know? And later on... You know how I do with mysteries. If later on... If I think of who done it, And then later on think of the book. And there was clues that I missed. I'm like, oh, good job. You know? You let the reader kind of fall along. But there there was nothing like that. It was sort of like an epiphany. Oh, this is what happened kind of a thing. So that was a little bo That kind of... I always disappointed when that happens. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't have all that much to say about the second book. I was disappointed. It was a little boring. Am I going to continue reading this writer? Absolutely. Or writers, I should say. Absolutely. Because just because I didn't like one of their books doesn't mean... I'm not going to read them ever again. Um, take Lisa Claypez. Take Joanna Lindsay. I adore those two writers. There's so many of their books that I absolutely despise. I still read their stuff. You know, authors have off books. Like, it's just the way it goes. You know, sometimes you just don't drive with it. Especially if you're an emotional, like, you know, um, a mood reader like me. It just happens. So the second book, Disappointment. But that's okay. Um, so I'm going to go now because my voice... <laughs> It's starting to hurt. So I don't want to, but it's time for me to get back to the real world. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you later. Bye.